Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be talking about a comparing uh, Euclidean, hyperbolic, spherical, and taxicab geometry, specifically the uh, things that we've been talking about in the earlier playlist so far. So these are four basic geometries that we're going to be studying quite a bit in the rest of this uh, rest of these playlists in this geometry section and in my college geometry course. Of course, the Euclidean geometries are a familiar geometry that most of us know about. And it's been around for many, 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 many uh, centuries. Uh, hyperbolic geometry, we're going to be using the Beltrami Poincare half plane model that we have introduced in earlier videos. We've also introduced some GeoGebra and uh, Leonard Sphere models for spherical geometry. And traditional taxicab geometry is what we're going to be looking at as well. Um, there are there is at least one other slight variation on taxicab geometry that I have seen, and I have seen uh, multiple representations of hyperbolic geometry. But these are the versions that we're going to be using in my uh, presentation of this material. So we're going to talk about some things that we've talked about so far. Uh, the incidence postulates a little bit how they how they relate relate, and the concepts of distance basic things like points, lines, and planes, and so forth. And so these are the parts that we've talked about so far. We'll compare some of these things a little bit more in detail as we learn other topics in all four of these geometries simultaneously. So some things that they have in common, there are infinitely many points, lines, and planes in all four geometries. Any three non-collinear points determine a plane. And in, particular, in a particular plane, there exists a unique perpendicular line to any given line through any specified point on the given line. So these are some things that are uh, common to all four geometries. What are lines? Well, Euclidean lines are Euclidean lines. You probably know what they look like. Uh, they have equations of the form ax plus by equals c for some real numbers a, b, and c. And any two distinct points determine a unique line. In hyperbolic geometry, there are two types of lines. Lines are Euclidean semicircles with centers on the half plane edge, uh, and of course, open endpoints on both uh, that are also on the edge. And uh, or the other kind is that they're open ascending rays perpendicular to and starting on the edge, with the course the point on the edge not being part of it. And any two distinct points again determine a unique line. In taxicab geometry, lines are Euclidean lines, um, and any two distinct points determine a unique line. In spherical geometry, lines are Euclidean great circles. In other words, the intersection of the sphere with the Euclidean plane, which contains the center of the sphere, or in other words, a circle of radius 1, because we're taking our unit sphere as our plane, uh, centered at the origin of the sphere as a Euclid at the center of the sphere as a Euclidean object. Uh, they are also circles of radius power over 2 in the spherical plane. And there we have to modify our postulate a little bit. And so we have to say any two distinct non-antipodal points determine a unique line. So a pair of antipodal points are contained on infinitely many lines. So what about a line segment? A line segment is defined to be a set of points consisting of the endpoints A and B and all the points between A and B where A and B are distinct non-antipodal points. That's going to be our actual definition. And in the case of um, hyperbolic, Euclidean, and spherical geometry, a line segment is the unique shortest continuous path between any two non-antipodal points. And it is the line segment with those two points as endpoints. In taxicab geometry, it's one of the shortest paths. It's a shortest path between two points is the Euclidean line segment between the two points, but there's not the unique shortest path. Uh, infinitely many points of the same length can be created, if I mean paths of the same length can be created using, some of them using only horizontal and vertical line segments, uh, but you know, using all kinds of different paths, we can make uh, paths of equal length as measured by the taxicab metric. In Euclidean geometry, line segments are continuous portions of a line, and they can be anything in the length of the interval from 0 to infinity. Finite length, but any positive finite length. Any two distinct points determine a unique line segment 
with these points as endpoints. That's also true for hyperbolic geometry. Line segments are continuous portions of a line, and they have links anywhere from uh, anything in the interval 0 to infinity. Any positive length can be, can be uh, obtained. And any two distinct points determine a unique line segment with these points as endpoints. Remember when we say determine a line, we mean they're given two points. There exists exactly one line containing those two points. Uh, that's going to be also true in uh, taxicab geometry. Line segments are continuous portions of a line which have links in the interval 0 to infinity. Any two distinct points determine a unique line segment with these points as endpoints. In spherical geometry, line segments are continuous portions of a line, but they, have, they, they can only take on links between 0 and pi non-inclusive. Okay. In less than pi and greater than zero for our links of all line segments. Any two distinct non antipodal points determine a unique line segment with these points as the endpoints. If you take two antipodal points, there is no line segment with them as the endpoints. All right, how about distance? Well, distance is non negative and unbounded in uh, taxicab, hyperbolic, and Euclidean geometry. We have bounded metric. And the Euclidean metric, in, in of course, is basically the Pythagorean theorem for distance, or Euclidean distance formula. It's delta x squared plus delta y squared, and then square root to get the distance there. Whereas in taxicab distance, is the absolute value of delta x plus the absolute value of delta y. Uh, a little more complicated to find the distance in hyperbolic geometry, it's, but it's still non-negative and unbounded. It used the cross ratio to measure the distance. If you take AB, you take the natural log of the, dis the Euclidean distance from A to M times Euclidean distance B to N divided by uh, a, the distance A to N and B to M. These are Euclidean distances. And the, or if they've got different first coordinates, if they got the same first coordinates, it's just the natural log of A, the distance from A to M and B to M. In other words, it's the natural log of the Y coordinate of A divided by the Y coordinate of B. Where M and N are intersections of the half plane edge in Euclidean circle or uh, as Euclidean objects or Euclidean line containing the hyperbolic line through the two points, and the distances in the formula are Euclidean distances again. So you'll see in an earlier video for more explanation about that. In spherical, the distance is non-negative, but it's bounded to at most pi. The farthest two points can get apart is pi, which is half the uh, distance around the sphere. And that's using a sphere of radius 1. Uh, if we use the sphere radius 1, which is what we're going to do, then the distance is the Euclidean arc length, which is also the same as the angle measure of a central angle intercepting the arc measured in radians as a Euclidean thing. So as a Euclidean thing, take the point, go to the center of the sphere, and then to the other point, measure that angle in radians, and that's the same as the Euclidean arc length, since the radius of the sphere is 1, and so that's going to be uh, the distance there, which is also the Euclidean arc length. Rays, a ray AB, the arrow over it, is defined to be the union of the line segment AB and the set of points C such that B is between A and C. That's the formal definition in all four geometries. A is the endpoint of a ray. A ray is going to be then basically a half line, and A and B are distinct non antipodal points. So in Euclidean geometry, rays just half a line, has infinite length, continuing forever in one direction, but not the other. In taxicab geometry, a, a ray is also a Euclidean ray, so they're the same thing. We would use the same tools for those in, in uh, GeoGebra. Um, now, in, in Euclidean geometry, uh, uh, we have that, but in, in uh, hyperbolic geometry, a ray is a half line indicating an infinite length. Uh, it won't be an infinite length as a Euclidean length, but it'll be an infinite length measured in hyperbolic uh, measurements. It can be a Euclidean arc from a circle uh, centered on the edge with the endpoint in the plane and extending to but not including the point on the edge. And it can be a vertical ray, Euclidean ray, with the endpoint in the half plane pointing up. 
It can also be a, a vertical Euclidean line segment with an endpoint in the plane, an open endpoint on the edge. So sort of three different versions there. Um, and hi, that's hyperbolic in our model of hyperbolic geometry. Spherical geometry arrays half a line. It's a Euclidean semicircle with included endpoint and included endpoint at the antipodal point of the endpoint. It has a length of pi. What about intersecting lines? Well, in Euclidean geometry, two distinct lines in a plane may be parallel, meaning they do not intersect, and they're in the same plane, or they could intersect in exactly one point. That's, of course, just since Euclidean lines, uh, taxi cab lines are Euclidean lines, you get exactly the same result there. And that's also true in hyperbolic geometry. Two distinct lines may be parallel or intersect in exactly one point. Um, but in um, spherical geometry, any two distinct lines that are in the same plane always intersect in exactly two points, and those will be an antipodal pair. There'll be a distance of pi apart, like the North Pole and the South Pole. So there's a quick side-by-side -side, uh, comparison of those uh, four geometries, at least what, some of the things that we've studied thus far.